Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome to Satisfactory 1.0. The full release is finally here, and I'm so excited to be playing this. I know you guys are pumped too. It, we've waited a long time for this. I haven't played in like three years, so really excited to dive in. I am going to go to the grass fields. Um, I know the other locations are cool. I, did, I think I did Rocky Desert. One time, yesterday we were kind of pre-gaming and I looked at the dune desert, but I, th I think I just like the grass fields. So we're gonna, we're gonna stick with that. And we're gonna hop straight in here. We're not gonna skip the intro because there's new stuff for that, new voice lines. And uh, yeah, Kaidania is about to begin. You guys are gonna join me on this journey. I do, oh yeah, okay, I'll, I'll be quiet while we watch the intro. Separation from main transport complete. Group A delivered to Calistian region. All pioneers functional, initiating dispersion. Attention pioneer, I am Ada, your personal instance of the artificial directory and assistant. Welcome to the Fixit Incorporated Save the Day program. Save the day. A Fixit pioneer has three core assignments. Construct. All pioneers must follow fixed guidelines and instructions when constructing any building. Automate. Every pioneer is responsible for setting up and managing efficient pipelines, outposts, and power infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Explore and exploit. Fixed selected planets are rich with resources suitable for direct use or further investigation. Stay within your designated. <laughs> And that is why the world is counting on pioneers like you. Fix it. Short-term solutions to long-term problems. We already got Initiating our summer sloops fall. breaking in. Atmospheric entry in three, two, one. Beginning arrow assist. Drag within acceptable parameters. Planetfall complete. Drop pod integrity nominal. Omni situational exploration suit nominal. Pioneer acceptable. Oh, I'm not nominal. Tedge. Oh, feel like a kid on Christmas. It's funny because, you know, I've played this game already. Congratulations. Feels you are fresh. The third in your region to survive Planetfall. Welcome to Massage 2, A, B, B, in the binary system of Akicha. Sweet! Hello, Loading objective-based introduction. Begin onboarding. Talk me through it. First contact safety tool supplied due to presence of alien megafauna. Adhere to Fixit procedure and equip the Fixit Inc. Xeno Zapper before leaving the drop zone. Okay. Got it. Next objective, dismantle the drop pod. Fix it incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. The drop pod will be recycled to construct the first stage of the habitat and utility base, often referred to as the hub. Hub. Next objective, use the resource scanner to find and collect additional iron to be able to build the hub. If you cannot find iron, be assured scans of the planet have revealed sufficient iron sources. So if you can't find it, you're just a dummy. That's that's what I hear. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, a lot over there. What is that? Oh yeah, those things. I wish we could have a pet one. That sits on our shoulder like a pirate. 
All right, I don't know where I want to build my hub, but uh, probably out here somewhere in the flatter areas. I think when I first played the game, I built it like really close to the edge of the map and I regretted that later. So I maybe shouldn't have jumped off. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. We're fine. Collect some leaves along the way. And we will have to do some convincing of the locals to, to let us have this iron. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to talk to you about my lord and savior, Zeno Zapper. Thank you. Samples of interrupting previous message for higher priority message. All right. Next objective, use the build gun to construct the hub. Iron is a base component necessary for all near future progress, so ensure you build the hub close to iron sources. Fix it does not pay by the kilometer. <laughs> I think I'll just, uh, no, this is too close. This is too close, hold on. Undo. Hub foundation Undo. built. The hub terminal and crafting bench are only the humble beginnings of a successful fix it pioneer, but essential here. for the next steps of onboarding. Once finished, the hub will function as your base of operations. Next objective. Complete hub upgrade one. Oh, I'm not sprinting. There we go. I knew something was Potential off. Potential edible collected. Eating it and surviving does not count as a valid field test and does not generate enough data for fix it to make an informed decision. <laughs> Eating it and Still surviving is isn't enough for you? Potential resource for later use. Lame. Okay, so um, I, ha I guess we'll have to see if all the video settings are good, but um, I think I think I'm okay with the camera covering up that stuff. That's basically just telling me the hotkeys. That's never any important information. So that's fine, I think. Um, yeah, okay, so we are gonna be satisfactorying. I was talking with some people yesterday when I was pre-gaming, uh, for those of you on watching the YouTube videos. I am gonna do this run a little bit more aesthetics focused and organized focused than kind of my standard just throw stuff at a wall, throw spaghetti at a wall and see what sticks. Uh, we're gonna try a little harder than that to keep our world organized, but you know, it's still Crydex we're talking about, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> And my goal is, of course, to beat the game, and that's the bare minimum, but I'd like to go further than that, and um, probably, I don't know if mega base will be the word, but definitely I want to, to have a very efficient and beautifully working automation late game base. So I'm just starting out with iron plates and iron rods here. I don't actually know what I need. What do I need for the first upgrade? Ooh, now they've got nice little lock buttons. Cool. Okay. Plus one hand equipment slot, portable miner, equipment workshop. So for those who haven't played Satisfactory, um, welcome to one of the best, one of the best uh, automation games in the world. There are, we call them the big three in the business. One of them is Factorio. This is the second, and then the third would be Dyson Sphere Program. They each have their unique charms, and as, uh, you know, centered, you were saying it goes Factorio, then Dyson Sphere Program, then Satisfactory. I think for me, it's Factorio, then Satisfactory, then Dyson Sphere Program. In fact, I don't even know if Dyson Sphere Program makes third place for me. I have yet to really get into it. Um, I do still need to give it another chance, I think. But yeah, I'm just gonna grab some iron here. And these games are all about collecting resources and automating. I'm gonna presume most of you have some experience with games like this, but in case you don't, I'll walk you through some of the basics. You get iron, as I just was mining iron over there, and then at least in this game, you can handcraft ingots and plates and rods, and you turn those things into other materials. And then as we get new unlocks, then we can build things like smelters and constructors, which will automatically do this for us by feeding things with uh, conveyor belts and such. So we have to put these items into the hub to upgrade it. And then it starts upgrading our hub into a hub nice little base of one, operations storage here. Storage and frame completed. Equipment like the portable miner can now be made in the workshop. Congratulations on completing your first milestone, the first of many providing access to new recipes and technologies for the fix it mission. Next objective, complete hub upgrade two. Makes sense. After one comes two, <laughs> that's how things work. 
And yeah, okay, this Greg Tech is third. I, I didn't even mention Greg Tech New Horizons, of course. It's it's kind of its own beast. Um, it's not really... I wouldn't call it an automation game. It's an automation mod, which... I've talked about it before, but there's a very different feel to playing GTNH versus a game that actually was created to be an automation game. And for some people, they love it, and other people are not as into it. I recently did a Greg Tech New Horizons series on my uh, channel. If you guys are interested in that, you can go check that out. I made it to 200 hours of gameplay, which is barely scratching the surface for Greg Tech, but I was proud of it. And here we go. Hub upgrade number two is already done. Ooh, we have a roof now. All right. Hub upgrade two, power and shell completed. The smelter can turn raw ore such as copper and iron into ingots, mm -hmm. and the biomass burner generates power when fueled. Fun fact, most of the native flora and fauna is compatible with Fixit technology. Compatible? Fueling the biomass burner with inappropriate materials will result in deductions or even cancellation of your yearly bonus. Not my yearly bonus. Next objective, complete hub upgrade three. Not my yearly bonus, oh no. Yeah, I think Dyson Sphere is definitely one that I need to give another good chance to, especially now that the Dark Fog update has come out. So I will I will go back to that at some point. I should be making... So what we want to do here is we need to get the equipment workshop, which needs some rods. So let me grab some more iron. Um, and then with the equipment workshop, we can make some portable miners. And the reason that's nice is then we don't have to do this. We'll get that done. Uh, Bochka, first impressions are great. I mean, so far it's pretty much the same as what I did yesterday. <laughs> Apart from Ada having some new lines, some new voice lines, and the story, which we haven't really gotten started into yet, uh, is going to be different. I feel like I'm falling faster. I think they increased gravity. Are you guys feeling that? It's hard to feel it when you're not the one playing it. But compared to playing yesterday, I feel like the air time when you jump is less. Um, I can't quite tell if I'm just making that up or not, but it does feel different to me. It feels less floaty, which I don't like. I actually liked the floatiness. Oh, uh, what am I doing? Equipment workshop? Let's put that, um, I don't know, right here. Of course... It's that's actually not good. I don't want to have to <laughs> jump into it. Um, it's kind of not a very flat area, I guess. Yeah, we're going to need foundations, whatever. I'll just deal with it for now. All right, we'll make a couple portable miners here. And these cute little guys will... They don't require any fuel or anything, which is nice. Um, but they have a maximum inventory of 100. And so you end up... Now, how do you switch between... Um... Oh, just the scroll wheel. Okay, there we go. <gasps> Rock and stone achievement. Ooh. Wonderful. Rock and stone. Yeah, Cadis, the, the fixed map is an interesting dynamic. I think it actually makes for a much better experience for first time players and even for second and third time players. Eventually, I think it wears out its welcome, but it's a pretty big map. And I think it's more than large enough. And the fact that, like, when you go into a cave, you know that that cave was hand-designed and there are things in there that were hand-placed. I think that's a way cooler feeling than just random generation. I do think, eventually, I'm hoping they'll come out with new maps, right? Like, I could see a DLC that's just a whole different map. Maybe, you know, like, an extension, but I could just see an entire map DLC, and that would be pretty awesome. Um... Yeah, eventually you'll know where every single vein is and where all the hard drives are and that. But this map is pretty big that you're not going to be able to memorize that stuff easily. You can have vague feelings like, oh, I remember irons over there. 
But memorizing stuff, it's a huge map. It's not easy to just know where everything is. Um, okay, so now I've got the portable miners running and I'd like to get a smelter going and the biomass burners that come with this little hub are on this side. So there it is, so we feed that with leaves and I need iron rods and wire. Oh, I need wire for that. So we're gonna have to look for some copper here. Okay, so the nearest copper is 200 meters that way. Let me first make some more portable miners so we can get copper going with that. Yeah, an underground map could be interesting. Um, yeah, all that to say the satisfactory map not being random has pros and cons and personally, I think it's perfect for the game that it, it is. Um, I could see a world where a randomly generated satisfactory map could be cool too, but I don't think the game would be better with it. But you never know. All right, grab that iron. Okay. Uh, what am I doing? I need more rods. Yeah, exactly, MB. The, the nice thing about it is that you can always make more maps. And I'd say the experience on a hand-placed map is far better than the experience on a randomized map. So I'd rather you know, have a version where people, and even community, I'm guessing the community, now that 1.0 is out, I'm guessing there'll be uh, community made maps. I can't fit between these in this corner. That's gonna bother me. So I, I'm guessing that within the next year, there will be like, you know, uh, mods, basically mods that make a new map or add new parts to the map. That's totally gonna be a thing. Anyway, let's go get some copper. Because I think that's important for making smelters and such. Got some back there. Yeah, this is kind of annoying. I guess this is like a little ramp for me over here that I can walk up. All right. What do we got? A normal copper node plus a... Well, as you know that I must zap. A hog, as they're called. And those hog remains can be researched in the... There's like a little... What do they call it? Molecular analyzer or something. Uh, it's called the MAM. And you can start to unlock... Kind of like... They're almost like secondary tech trees. So the main tech tree is unlocked through progression in the hub. And you feed it materials and stuff, and then eventually the space elevator. But then there's kind of these secondary tech trees in the MAM, and that allows you to... Um, what am I doing here? That allows you to get things that are not necessary for progression, but often very useful. Like more weapons, and more mapping tools, and quality of life stuff, and high-tech mergers and splitters, and all that. So. All right, so we got those miners running, so we should be able to come back and grab some copper in a bit, but I think we have enough for our first smelter. And I guess now's a good time, since we're just kind of dinking around the early game, to mention some of the Crydania stuff that I've got going on. I don't like to start the video by plugging all my things, but I should do it at some point. I am a full-time content creator, and I'm gonna be making a crap ton of satisfactory content here soon so you can keep your eyes peeled on this channel for that and if you would like to join the discord it's uh there's a link in the about section below this video or if you're on twitch also on twitch and yeah we've got a huge community lots of people talking about this game and other factory games and you know playing everything from minecraft to shooters to world of warcraft you know whatever game you play there's people there that would like to talk to you about it so Feel free to join Crydania. And if you'd like to support me making these videos, obviously, like, my ability to make these videos is 
made possible by you guys watching them, commenting on them, subscribing, all those things. Um, but Patreon is the best way to financially support me. If you're interested, you can go to patreon.com slash Crydax. You get some special rewards for different tiers, and that's all explained on the website. And you guys know what to do best with your money, so I trust you to uh, be wise with that. Don't give me money if you don't have money to give me, but I do appreciate any and all support you guys can offer. And it really does make uh, this channel possible. So thank you to all my patrons. And there's a name randomizer tier, and I will be naming things in this satisfactory playthrough after patrons. So you guys can look forward to that. I'm pretty excited. And yeah, we've got some wire now, and I will need cables. Cables are what you use to attach powered things to the power, so we'll get all that going. There is quite a bit of handcrafting, and the thing that's different about this game is you have to handcraft in one location, whereas in Factorio, you're kind of handcrafting in the background, and so it's a much bigger deal in this game to automate things early. Oh, I still need a couple iron rods for the smelters. Because um, if you don't automate it, you literally have to sit here and craft it. So it's a pretty big difference whether something's automated or not. And yeah, modding is more difficult for sure um, in Satisfactory than in some other games. But I do think they've talked about it multiple times that official mod support is going to be a thing. And they just weren't able to fit it into the 1.0 release so i'll throw my leaves in here as a basic fuel and then i should be able to connect with a wire like that and then i should be able to throw iron ore in here just like the iron ingot recipe and we have our first smelter Ta -da! we are polluting the world now there is no pollution in this game apart from the visual smoke coming out of things um, and that's another difference that you have in Satisfactory versus, uh, you know, Factorio and whatnot. Ooh. That shadow. Oh, the big flying manta ray just flew past the sun. Wow, that's a long-range shadow that that thing cast on me. That's kind of crazy. Um, the, the mobs do not, uh, they're not hostile in the sense that they'll come attacking you. You don't have any defensive measures in this game or towers. The mobs are simply part of the kind of the exploration half of the game. I say half, it's not half the game, but the exploration aspect of Satisfactory, you have to be able to fight off the mobs that are there, but there's no defending of the base in this game, which is, I think, good. Some people have wanted that, but I don't think it would make for a better game. Again, you know, they've tailored the experience to be built around not doing that, so it wouldn't really it wouldn't make sense with the game they've built. Obviously, they could have made a different game where tower defensing is kind of a thing that you do, but I digress. Uh, so what do we want to do next? We've got an iron smelter going. I think we would just want to go for the hub upgrade. Do I have enough? I do. Sweet. What do we get? Tell hub us, Ada. Upgrade three. Interior furnishing completed. The constructor can produce simple parts, and power poles allow for the expansion of the power grid. Mm -hmm. When you make the inevitable mistake, Fix-It's dismantling feature is designed to salvage all resources used during construction, in line with our zero-waste policy. We understand that Fix-It pioneers are only human, and thus prone to error. Next Meh. objective, complete hub upgrade Errors? 4. I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, we need a third resource now called limestone, and you can make concrete with this stuff, and that's important um, because with concrete, you can build power poles and foundations and all sorts of stuff, so we'll wanna automate automate that as soon as possible. Um, I guess I should get automated miners, or portable miners, I guess they're called. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I should just make like, a bunch more portable miners. This is not gonna be enough. So, two plates and four rods a piece. Let me grab my ingots. It's nice to have the ingots automated because those take a lot more time handcrafting. Whereas like the rods go quite quickly as, and the plates do as well. So, 
It would be interesting to see the pollution change the world, like killing the trees. Yeah, almost like a reverse um, Planet Crafter. Uh, that's another really cool game that, if you like this game, I feel like a lot of the same people are interested in the Planet Crafter. It's less automation-y and more prog... I don't even know how you describe the Planet Crafter. There's a little bit of automation-y elements, but you're mainly collecting resources to terraform the world. And you don't like automate things with conveyor belts and whatnot. But it's a really sweet game, and as you terraform, like the world turns green and trees grow, and there's a lot of cool stuff. So. Uh, Bochka, I don't know exactly what you were asking earlier. What do you. How to make money for you? I don't understand the question. Okay, so I've got nine more. I'm gonna throw couple on limestone here and it is nice you can throw as many as you want on the nodes also is the game a little loud or do you guys think it's about right felt like it might be looking a little too loud over there all right I'm gonna plop three more on copper Grab all the outputs. Oh, and we just ran out of leaves for power. Okay. That should be enough copper for quite a while. You really only need it in medium amounts at first because you're not automating anything with it. You're just using it for, like, building things and power grid and all that. Alright, I should be grabbing these leaves as I walk by them. To be honest. I'm gonna place two more on here. Limestone, you need a lot of it for um, concrete. You need three for each concrete. So. And then we'll get the rest of these thrown on the iron deposits. good yeah slide jumping doesn't feel like it used to boost your speed now i'm not even sure if it is it de they definitely nerfed slide jumping i'm quite certain of that uh that is a little bit of a bummer okay what am i doing smelter oh i need biomass uh here you can have 76 leaves again New fear unlocked. Oh, was that the power going out? That's funny. Okay, so what do I need? I need to get some concrete going here. We'll do that. Make the rest of my copper ingots into useful things. At least at this stage of the game, the ingots themselves are never used for, like, building something. It's only the the stuff that you make with ingots. And I'll need more rods, as well as more plates. Pretty soon we want to work towards constructors. Have I unlocked those yet, or is that the next tier? I have, okay. So constructors need these reinforced iron plates, and those are six plates and 12 screws, and screws are made from rods, so you can see clearly how we're already having these complex production chains where you have to make, you know, five different things to get a reinforced plate. So automating them is very high priority. And then, yeah, we can at least get one constructor going. Um, and I can put it right in front of that one for when we get a conveyor belt. We can do something with it. But for now, I need a power pole. And there's a new feature that they added apparently a little while ago where you can split a wire with a power pole. And then now I can add more wire connections to that one. So that's really handy. And we're gonna make 
Probably iron plates in here. Seems reasonable. And then I will go collect my limestone. The first time you played MB was individual clicks. I remember... I mean, I played before it was even technically early access. Like, I, whatever they did at the very beginning when this game first was available to play. I did play that version. But even in that version, I thought you could click and hold. But maybe I'm misremembering. It's been so long. It's very possible that's not the case. Okay, I think... Oh, my inventory's full. Well, I definitely have enough iron for now. I am going to need to go biomass collecting. Uh, currently, MB, you just press the space bar and it toggles. So you don't even need to hold down the mouse button now, which is very nice. Put away the hog remains. Maybe some copper. Okay, concrete. I'm just going to have enough to build stuff. The next upgrade is conveyors. We definitely want that. But that needs 75 plates and a few more cables. Uh, using the mouse right now, you have to click and hold it. But it, you don't have to do individual clicks. Yeah, if you click this, you can just click and hold. Or you can just tap spacebar as well. We'll get uh, a little bit more cable and wire here. And then we shall finish that with plates. Probably don't have enough. Got 26 in there. And yeah, I don't have... I put all my wood away. Wood lasts a lot longer than leaves. Oh, I only have two. Never mind. All right, we need to go get some biomass. There is lots here, but I happen to be in an area without tons. But we can collect all these bushes. Up there, there's like forestry and stuff, and we can grab all we want. But once we have the chainsaw, then we can go on a few, on a few trips to get a lot of logs. For now, we can just grab all the leaves we can see. Oh yeah, and there's these things called power slugs. There's one up there. And you unlock the ability to overclock your buildings with those, which is pretty handy. Can I collect this? No, that's a tree. And this is your little home base, which is fun. Oh, character customization. <gasps> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Bobblehead. This is... How long has this been in? Is this new? I can have a little nuclear waste trinket? No, we gotta do the little check it. Oh, that's cool. You can you can put things in the toilet? Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Okay, we gotta flush something. Wait. Oh, there we go. Yeah! Toilet flush! <laughs> it splashes everywhere. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Okay. What was I actually doing? I got distracted. I think I was getting more... Oh yeah, getting power running. Alright. And this guy can only handle 20 megawatts worth of power, which is five of these buildings. Constructors and smelters are both four megawatts. So, I will get another constructor going here. No, I can't. I don't have the reinforced plates. Just kidding. Okay. Well, we'll get there eventually. For now, I think we need to do some more hand crafting. Get that going. Yeah, probably another smelter is what we should do. Instead of waiting. Those are eight wire, five rods. Okay. 
I'm gonna do another smelter here. And you can hold control to do this like snapping thing where it'll snap next to it. And then apparently that's new, I think. Where if you're doing, if you're holding control so that it's building in line with it, when you get next to the building, it actually like, like suctions onto the side of the building there. And then it builds them nice and adjacent. I feel like that's new, but maybe it's not. Um, but I do need power here. I'm just gonna get a couple power lines. If I don't run out of power. This game is beautiful. I love the way this game looks. That is something it has over all the other factory games. I don't think anyone can debate that. Now, whether they like the aesthetic or not is definitely preference, but as far as just the overall graphical quality and fidel fidelity uh, it's a pretty hands down winner I would say okay that should be enough ingots I'm gonna put half in there and then we'll keep half to make some more rods and another couple reinforced plates here so I can make another constructor eventually you need to automate reinforced iron plates of course but the constructors can only handle one input, and so you need the next building, which is called the assembler. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, that could handle two inputs. Right. Hub upgrade number four. Hub upgrade four, landing platform and utilities completed. Conveyor belts connect the output of one building to the input of another and transport resources. Due to past incidents, I have been asked to issue a clarification. Portable miners, obviously, do not have a connection for conveyor belts. Uh -huh. There is nothing to suggest, visually or functionally, that they can be connected to portable miners. If this is something you struggle with, do not worry. Fixit has alternative uses for all their pioneers. <laughs> Next objective, complete hub upgrade 5. Alternative uses for all their pioneers? I don't know. I don't want to know what that means. Soylent, Soylent Green, maybe? They, they don't waste. They, they like to recycle. Here, fix it. Alright, let's get this powered up. Okay, this constructor, I think I will have it make, I don't know, wires? I need another smelter. Or, uh... Whatchamacallit? Copper. So yeah, we are just going to be working through the tutorial here. Steady and slow. Really, once we get through the, the hub upgrades, then you kind of can start to automate things properly. And there is an option to skip all of it entirely, which I did not select because I wanted to you know, get the full experience, but you can skip straight to the hub upgrades being done. And in that event, you get to, you know, you s that way you start the game with belts and whatnot, and that's a little simpler. Okay, so here's my five buildings. I cannot run any more buildings on this amount of power. And probably I'm gonna be running out of leaves pretty quick here. Yeah, they burn through real fast. Let me go collect some more stuff. I have a good amount of inventory space here. I don't know which direction has the most biomass. And pretty soon we get an upgrade that allows us to turn leaves and wood into a thing called biomass, which is much more fuel efficient than leaves are. Oh, there's a copper, just a copper rock here. That's interesting. All right, leaf, leaf, leaf. Get all the leaves. I think that's probably enough for now. Here's another uh, limestone node. Sometimes you go find go to find leaves and you end up finding a power slug, but we did not 
managed to locate one in this in this case. All right, that should be enough foliage for a minute. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so you get more iron, you get iron. You're smelting copper. Yeah, we're finally starting to get enough stuff here. Grab my plates. Automate some more wire production. I am going to need that copper that I put in the chest in here. And then we'll throw that in the smelter. Perfect. They auto bound to hotbar ten. Uh, that was actually the same before. In the last stream, the little heart emote that was before. Uh, that at least was present in update eight. I did that, or I found that in yesterday's stream too, on accident. Okay, so hub upgrade number five. We need a bunch of cable, some limestone, or some concrete and rods. I will. Do some more hand crafting. But yeah, obviously with all this work, the sooner you can get conveyors going, the better. Because this is not the most riveting gameplay. And you say, you're right, it's not riveting, it's screwing. Because, <laughs> you know, they're not rivets, they're screws. <laughs> All right, I am going to make enough reinforced plates to make two more constructors. And then we'll need a bunch of concrete here. Probably automating concrete is the first thing I'll do once I can um, build miners. Because you just need so much concrete. It's kind of crazy when you're building big areas of foundations. You need a lot. I'll just let this go. Ah, beautiful. So, I'm thinking once we get trucks, Am I going to make roads? <laughs> is kind of uh, something I've been playing around with in my head. I'm not really sure if I'm going to do that or not. Because they look so cool, but they're also so much work to set up. So I guess we'll find out. I haven't decided yet. But I'm going to go grab that copper since we're kind of running low. And then we shall continue working through the hub upgrades. Alright, so here's my copper. How do you switch uh, emoticons in the game? I can't remember. There's a there's a wheel for them somewhere. Some hotkey. I don't remember which one it is. Because, yeah, there's, there's quite a few more little emotes. Do I prefer full concrete foundation or metal? Uh, I don't know yet. I haven't really tried both. We're going to be discovering our aesthetic preferences as we go. Oh, my inventory's full. I'll throw away four screws and I can stack those leaves. Yeah, I actually don't think slide jumping is faster anymore. I might have to time it. It might be mildly faster, but they... I'm almost 100% sure they changed the physics of slide jumping and the floatiness and the acceleration. I feel like you're not getting that boost that you used to. Uh, copper... What am I doing? Iron ingots, copper ingots... Need you the copper ingots, take the wire. Okay, and I might have enough plates for now. Let's switch this over to rods. Only 15 a minute? Jeez. 
It's actually so slow, I almost don't want to make them in here at all. Because even the plates are faster than that. And the rods are faster in the handcrafting. The rods are only one little click per rod, so they go quite, quite fast when you're handcrafting them. And I need 50 cables and... Okay, no, we're good on concrete. So hub upgrade five, we are basically there. go. Ta-da! What did that Hub add to upgrade the building? Five, power expansion I don't know. Maybe completed. the roof? Oh, power the expansion miner, too. Unlike portable miners, can be connected to conveyor belts and requires power to function. Caution! As you expand, the energy demand of your production may exceed the capacity of your power grid. Mm -hmm. The onboarding program was established because Fixit pioneers often experience memory issues after planetfall. If you are experiencing nosebleeds, yes. nausea, existentialism, or an itchy scalp, there is no need for concern. This should pass within five to seven work days. Five to Next seven work days. Complete hub upgrade six. We'll be there in no time. All right, what's hub upgrade six? What do you got for me? Because yeah, having another biomass burner would be nice. And the biomass, I kind of want to rush that. All right, I need a few more plates, 100 wire, and a few more rods. So we're basically there. Yeah, the uh, the biomass is just so much more efficient than leaves that it's going to save me a lot of collection time. All right. Let's see what we got in our constructors here. 68 wire, not quite enough. Handcraft the rest. And I might as well. Oh, I, all I need is iron plates, but I don't have any. Uh, I was gonna say I might as well connect those with a, a belt. Let's do that. Our first belt connection. There we go. Beautiful iron ingots. Sweet. Well, and we're out of power, so all the more reason we need biomass. And yes, Vatamouse, that is correct. The biomass burner now has a belt connection, which is new, which is very exciting. It's not that necessary at this stage of the game yet, though, but, oh, I'm short a few plates. But it becomes very necessary. For sure. Alright, there we go. Hub upgrade six. Ta-da! Hub upgrade six. Landing platform hydraulics completed. Freighter landing initialized. Congratulations. You've been onboarded. You have completed onboarding and achieved the absolute minimum skill level required of a Fixit pioneer. The absolute fix minimum. Fixit looks forward to your future achievements because a future with Fixit is a future with you. Tier 1 and 2 milestones are now available in the hub, and biomass burners can now be built individually. Your first official objective is to initiate project assembly by building the space elevator. This yeah. objective will take a significant amount of resources, so Fixit recommends getting to work. Yep, 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 the space elevator. That's goal number one. But uh, yeah, now we can build more biomass burners which is nice, we can make however much power we want. And let's see, feed the iron ore. Copper ore, make sure those are still fed. And now we wanna make some biomass out of our leaves and whatnot. Cause yeah, biomass, we did the math last night. I don't know if it changed, uh, but it's like, I don't know, 20 times better than leaves or something. It was a lot. It was a very, very, very big difference. So now I can split, no, control right click uh, and then shift click. So we can put half in one, half in the other. So they'll run for the same amount of time. Crank that on. 
And now we've got both, but I need to connect that one to the power grid. There we go. So now I've got 40 megawatts, and I can make more with biomass burners, which I don't need quite yet, but soon. And okay, now what? Now we just continue to need more stuff. So one thing I want to do is automate mining of all the things. So first order of business is um what is it? I guess making do I have cable? I have 25 cable. I think I have enough of everything. So we just need to make the miners. So these are our unlocks that we can do. Base building for walls, foundations, and ramps. Logistics gets us lifts, splitters, and mergers. Field research. We get storage chests, the MAM, which is that secondary research I was talking about. Unlock the ability to see the map. And then tier two, we can get the assembler. That's how we automate uh, reinforced plates. The chainsaw and biofuel are a pretty big deal. Uh, I'll probably rush those as well. The awesome sink is really cool. That's how you, you kind of can basically trash anything, but it turns into these little coupon points that you can buy. Mostly cosmetic stuff, but there's some stuff that's um, not only cosmetic in there. Um, and then Mark II conveyor belts are pretty nice, as well as the stackable poles, which allow you to have a bunch of conveyors kind of over the top of each other, but nicely lined up. So we will need to make a few portable miners because each actual miner requires a portable miner to build. So I'll start with a few of these. And then I'd like to build a constructor plus a miner plus a storage container. And I have everything I need for that. So it's nice, you can do the little plus buttons and it'll show us, you know, over here on the side if I have all the required resources for that, and I do. And this way I can get concrete automated. How do I, how do I, gr oh, okay, there we go. Gotta pick them up like this. Okay, so we'll plop the miner down. And then a constructor, and we can hold control. It'll line itself up nicely. And we belt in, grab a power pole, connect those to the power, and then we need to get the power connected to the base. And then we should be good. Place a storage container in front of that. And if we're lucky, we just automated a uh, good old concrete here. There we go. Wonderful. Oh, I need to select the recipe. There we go. And this is a slow, this is a slow node, it's an impure node, so I only get 30 a minute. Which means I won't even get this full 15 a minute, I'll only get uh, 10 concrete a minute. So you can see why I want to automate that early, because it is just very slow. And then, we'll have to spread out our production here, be more effective. The space elevator is 500 concrete, 250 plates, 400 rods, and 1500 wire. That sounds like a lot, but once you automate those things, that builds up pretty fast. It builds up pretty fast. Um, for now, I'm just collecting all the bits and bobs that we've accumulated here. And do I want to do the chainsaw first? Or... Yeah, probably. Foundations are nice, but I don't really have enough resources for those anyway. So we'll just go straight for the chainsaw, which means a lot of screw crafting. <laughs> and... 100 concrete and 100 cables. If 
but yeah, we we need splitters as well. Maybe I should do splitters first. I think that's what I did last night in my pre-gaming stream. Because then with splitters you can get the beginning stuff automated, but I don't know. It's all it's all necessary eventually. I might switch this back to making that's going to save me more handcrafting time at the end of the day. And then the rods will have to finish crafting and yeah, I should build another what should I build? I should build another smelter combo. Switch this one to be iron. Oh, of course I'm missing wire. Always missing something. All right, let's switch you over here. And I don't have plates. <laughs> All right, fine. I don't have anything. I get it. So you go there. You're gonna be copper and wire. So that part's. Automated. That part's a tomato. I always feel like I'm about to say something about a tomato when I say automated. Wait, how does that have four? Oh, I couldn't see the other connection because it was I was lined up just behind it. And I'm out of cable. Or no, I'm not. I have four more, but basically out of cable. With great cable comes great responsibility. So I'm not ready for, for more more cable yet. Okay. I just disconnected something. disconnected but it's acting like it's did I just did I find a bug oh no that one's connected to the one in front okay no we're good oh I disconnected that that's what happened okay yeah because when I disconnected this one I knew I destroyed the connection to this smelter but I guess I had the the wrong thing so we'll switch that over to iron. Um, so we've got two iron smelters going. I like how it lets me do that, even though there's technically a smidgen of clipping going on. It used to not let me do that, so that's very handy. And now we switch this one to rods. So now I've got rods and plates. Semi-automated, as long as I'm feeding iron ore in here, which I'm now officially out of. Let's get... Now, is this an impure node? No, it's a normal node. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I need concrete to build the... Not the belt itself, but the little conveyor poles. Fire concrete. But we've automated that. So that's nice. And just in general, I like to go up. To level three, or is that level four? Wait, 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 wait. Was that level four? Two, three, four. You can go up to four now. That is new, right? At least since the last time I played, the highest you could go is three. Or maybe, maybe that's the same. Maybe I'm making that up. I don't know. I can't remember anything anymore. Regardless of how long it's been. It could be yesterday and I already would have forgotten. All right. Oh, I don't have splitters yet. Right. So I kind of just have to feed it into one building for now. 
Uh, which means I do still need these portable ones to give me a little bit more. Because I don't have splitters yet. This is probably the last iron I'll ever need from you guys. Aw. That's sad. And then we need to power that up with wire that I don't have. Makes sense. All the things, all the time. That is exactly right. Alright, we got a power pole over here. Oh, and there goes the power grid. <laughs> uh, did I really exceed 40? Max consumption's 42. Yep, I sure did. All right. Uh, do I know about the notes feature? Uh, no, sort of. It, it rings a faint bell when you say that. Um, but yeah, we'll get a biomass burner over here. And then I need to hook that up. Of course, I need some biomass for it. And these do 30 megawatts a piece. So they're 50% more than those little guys. That should be plenty of power for now. It's not going to last very long. So, all the more reason to get my chainsaw soon. Okay. I do have a lot of wire. If I hover over the right side of the screen, you can access Notepad. Whoa! That's crazy. Public notes, private notes, recipes, to do list. Sweet. Thank you for sharing that. That'll be useful. Okay, I'm going to make a couple more rips here. Rest in reinforced iron plates pieces. All right, we're going to unlock splitters, and then I think that'll be the perfect place to wrap up the YouTube episode. Finishing the onboarding, getting iron plates fully automated by having splitters off of the iron mine. I guess it'll be iron plates and iron rods fully automated. And yeah, so the episodes, this one, I guess will end up being a little bit over an hour. I'm going to try to keep them to around an hour's length. I think if I go too short, I'll just have way too many episodes because I'm going to be streaming this game a lot in the coming days. And I'm going to turn most of that streaming into YouTube episodes, kind of like I have with Factorio stuff in the past. So yeah, I think if I go too short on the episode length, there'll just end up being too many of them. I do, I do want to do daily releases for a long time, so there'll be a backlog. So eventually, you know, I'll probably be like multiple weeks delayed. So if you guys are leaving comments on the YouTube episodes, just know that uh, future Crydax or you might be leaving comments for a distant future Crydax. And that means if I break something in the base, it'll probably stay broken for a while if you leave a comment about it being broken. Uh, so you just have to hope that the people on Twitch and YouTube Live are gonna catch those mistakes <laughs> because it might be a little outdated by the time it gets to, to YouTube. Now, that's not true of this episode. This episode will be coming out the day after I record it. So, you know. For now, at least, you're still pretty close to being live. You have more ingots for me, right? Yeah. Okay. We are so close. Just 60 more plates. Ta-da!
Delicious iron plates. Yum, yum, yum. It is pretty satisfying that you don't have to hold down any buttons now. You can just take a nice little breather. Watch them all craft. I'm doing some extras because I need to make belts after I unlock the splitters. I also don't remember what a splitter costs. Here we go, our first launch. A chunk. Now we can watch it fly away. Milestone reached. Conveyor belts can now merge, split, and lift to save space and enhance the productivity of your factory. Fixit encourages you to consider investing in verticality when it comes to factory logistics. Bye -bye. If you feel stressed by this complexity, imagine yourself on the shore of a vast and calm ocean. Breathe in. Visualize all the people relying on you. The <laughs> sea is made of billions That's of faces, helpful. each staring at you with hope and tears in their eyes. Breathe out. Feel refreshed and focused on your duties. That's funny. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lift this. Alor, I agree. I do think it pretty quickly is obvious how painful handcrafting is. I, I think there's still plenty of motivation to automate things because of just the numbers you need. But it is true that handcrafting in this game is particularly effective compared to most. All right, I'm gonna go to up these. Alright, and then I'm gonna run out of belts here. Let me grab our plates. Let me grab a few more iron plates. Oh, we'll do lots of foundations. I just don't have enough concrete for it yet. My my ultra early game is not. Like, I do technically already have foundations, or, um, concrete automated, but I don't have enough to build tons and tons. I have 77, and I think foundations, aren't they like five each or something? So it goes pretty fast. All right, splitter. And you can't quite line these up properly because I built... I wonder, if these are not there, does it let me line it up? Oh, it does. Weird. Huh. So it'll line up with the building, but not with the, uh, the lift is kind of what, if it's higher, would it work? Oh, interesting. So it needs to be higher because it's not snapping to these other ones. So if I make that one higher. It'll snap to that one, too. Yeah, interesting. Isn't my duty as a streamer to spend an inordinate amount of time on aesthetics? Ah, uh, not me. Not me. I will do more aesthetics than I normally do, though, and I'll, I'll count that as a win. But yeah, I guess I'll do it. That just looks a little weird to go up and then down. I don't really like that, actually. We're, we're changing that. We're changing it back. Even though technically it uh, wanted to do it that way. But yeah, that, that looks more natural. Because it's the same at the same height. Now, my power, I did not do a very good job leaving room for that. So. Power poles fit underneath, almost. Just barely don't fit. Um, yeah, I guess I'll do something like this. Oh, I'm out of wires. Ah, oh, jeez. All right, let me grab the wire. Please tell me I have cable. I have 17. Right, 
And did I lose my connection to... Yes, I did. Over there. Okay, that one's already powered up. This one is not... This one is... Is everything powered up? Oh. Okay. You can see these little green green lights or yellow lights tell you it's paused. Sweet. Okay. Perfect. Well, I think we are going to call it an episode here. And in the coming episodes, we will actually get a more standard looking base going. But I think we've got a pretty good start. We've finished the onboarding. And, uh, yeah, as always, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about the Satisfactory 1.0 release. I know I'm really excited about it. I bet a bunch of you guys are, too. And uh, if you'd like to support the creation of these videos, please head over to patreon.com slash cardax. You get all sorts of perks. And uh, I'll see you guys in the Discord if you're interested. There's a link down below. And with that, I'll leave you guys to it. See you in the next one.